Hey everyone, welcome to the warehouse. Today we're going to put together a new bandit that we've got. Uh, it's a good looking bike, so uh, without further ado, let's uh, introduce the tools we're going to use. Um, we're going to use, so I like to use this. Um, it's got a, a four millimeter head on it. Uh, you'll need a five millimeter head as well, but uh, now just for note, what you get in your uh, starter kit may be different. Um, but these are the tools, so I'll, I'll use the five millimeter out of here. You can use the four out of here. If you have a screwdriver like this, it's a little easier, but some people don't have the tools, so um, you can use the four millimeter out of here if you have to. A knife to cut the box open. We've already taken it out of the box. And then I strongly recommend getting a pair of these dykes to, to the, um all the zip ties, because if you use a knife, you run the risk of damaging the tires or the parts or whatever. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn into this box. You've got pedals. Got a little pump. You've got a, a wrench to put on the uh, to put the tires or the pedals on the wheels to tighten them down. And then you've got your charger. So um, check the charger. Make sure it's got the right connections for whatever country you're in. Um, that looks good for the U.S. and uh, it's got the right connection for the battery. So set those aside and uh, let's get going on this. So the first thing you want to do is once you get it out of the box is uh, um, you'll notice, and sometimes in shipping, these crank arms will get twisted around. So if you want to come down, Alex, and just get a little clip tight in there, you'll see how if I, if I cut these zip ties, this, this wheel is, I'm going to have to fight to get this off. And so the way to get that fixed is I'm just going to lift this back tire off the ground ever so slightly, grab this other crank arm, and just walk that forward just a little bit until you can see that that kind of lines up with the spokes. And now when I cut these zip ties... Um, just gonna go through and nip these real quick. And again, this is why I don't want to use a knife because I, I run the risk of damaging the, you know, slicing the tire, which uh, has happened before. Um, and then this guy will just lift right off, just like that. So we'll just take this and set this aside for now. Looks like it's a solid axle with the acorn nuts on the front. So pull those off. I'm just gonna make a mess. Um, we'll clean it up after, but. Uh, Let's see, so I'm going to go around and cut all the zip ties off. Uh, and this takes a second. Uh, pull this, pull this pattern off, this extra protection. Um, I'm going to use these like a knife. Take that off. Tape. Yeah, so you just want to be sure you go around and cut off all the uh, all the uh, zip ties real quick. So um, I'm gonna move to the front and get these. And uh, just be careful you don't nip any wires. That's the last thing you want to do. So I think I'm good with those. Oh. And that's why it's good to have a, a wall or something close by you can lean the bike up against so you're, while you're working on it, you're not, uh, not knocking it over. Let's go ahead and unwrap all this stuff. It's like Christmas morning. And if you've been waiting for your bike, then uh, it really is Christmas morning. Okay, I'm gonna get this plastic out of here. have to pull this plastic off there's really no perfect way to do this but just you just want to get it out of the way so you can um, put the bike together okay once the plastic is gone <laughs> every little piece okay so you can see on the forks here it's got this thing to line it up but we'll get to that in a second first we need to do the first thing we need to do is uh, turn the stem around. Now, do not loosen this nut, or this bolt right in here. That's the last thing you wanna do. Uh, to spin this around, so what you wanna do, um, if this doesn't turn around, so maybe just straddle the bike 
and try to turn this. Now we're going to want to turn this clockwise because what we're doing is we're actually going to be tightening this bolt down. So let's just loosen these two. Just break these loose just enough to so we can turn this stem around. Okay, and then once we're good, so see as I'm turning this clockwise, righty tighty, lefty loosey, that thing. So, and then if you want, you can you can just you know make sure that this is tight. Um, if you loosen this, you run the risk of, of you know having stuff loose in your headset here, where this fork goes through. So you don't want to mess with that. Um, so just kind of get that close, call it good. Next thing we're going to do is, is mount the handlebars. This is where I like to use this versus the, the Allen wrench set that comes just because you can get this in here and just does it really fast. I'm just going to loosen these all up first. Okay, and if you have an extra set of hands around, that's sometimes it's helpful to have somebody help you with this, but uh, I'm just going to set this there. Okay. Just gonna roll it up, make sure that the com controllers on the, the, the pads on the right, or the left side of the handlebars, and then kind of line this up. Grab my tool here. Yeah, this is, takes, you just wanna be, be sure you, you line these up correctly. You don't wanna cross thread these. And so if, it's, if you're having to fight it to get it in, then uh, you may wanna back it out and just uh, maybe start with a, a different one, but uh, they should go right in nice and smooth. As it starts to tighten up, I, I just kind of want to use this gauge to center the handlebars. And I, I'm just going to get it kind of snug for now because I'm going to do some final adjustments later when, I've get, when I got the bike all put together just to make sure I got the maximum comfort for, for, uh, for my riding. Okay, so that's kind of, that's good. Nick this guy out right here. Now we're ready. Um, looks like we're going to need the five again for this to take off this headlight. So it looks like they've uh, revamped this headlight here. It's uh, a lot bigger than the other headlights we've got. So that's kind of cool looking. So we'll take this off and we're just going to set this out of the way for now. So what we're going to do is. Uh, um, Let's see, let's put this headlight and this fender on while we've got them here. So, put this on like this. This can go through like that. And some people put this on the front, some people put it on the back. There's really not a correct way to do it, just whatever keeps the mud and the rain off of you. So. I'm just going to go ahead and get this slightly tightened and okay so now with that down we're ready to go down here and uh, put this front wheel on. Let's get these out of the way. Okay, now down here you'll see this, this yellow spacer. With this spacer, um, I'm not gonna pull it out just yet, but that's keeping these hydraulic brake pads apart. So if, right now if I, if I hit the, le the brake lever, nothing's gonna happen. Um, if I pull that spacer and squeeze the brake lever, then we're gonna have an issue because those pads are gonna come together and we don't want that. So uh, I'm gonna take this off. Spacer on the fork. And once you get these loose, they should usually just fall right off. Okay. Before I take that off, and while I've got the bike kind of set it up here so it doesn't tip over on me, now I'm going to hit this wheel real quick. And again, this is a mess. We'll, uh, I'll clean this up later. So, you've got these acorn nuts and washers. Now you'll notice on this side, there's an extra nut. That is a spacer nut. Do not take this off. That goes in uh, between the four, on the inside of the fork and uh, the outside of the, well, yeah, on the inside of the fork. So if you take that off, you're not gonna be able to crank the wheel down tight and you run the risk of uh, having your wheel fall off on you. So 
leave that nut on there. It's supposed to be there. So I'm just going to back these acorn nuts off quite, well, not quite all the way, but just pretty close. Take it. Okay. And now with that, I'm ready to come out. I'm going to pull this yellow spacer out. Let's pull it over there so you can see it. And again, sometimes it's easier to do this with two people, but uh, I just want to show you, it can be done with one. Pull that spacer out. I'm going to um, lift this up and maybe, let me, I've got the insides loose and just make sure these outsides are loose too so that this will fall, should come right off. If it's not just spinning, there we go. So take that out. Okay, now this is a little bit of a tricky part because you got to line up your rotor as it goes into that caliper. So I'm just going to lift the bike up and just kind of walk it in and I'm keeping my eye on that rotor and then I'm just going to drop it down ever so slightly to where it'll sit on those where it fits into the Got the washer on the outside, got the washer on the outside, okay. I'm good, now at this point I'm gonna put the kickstand down and it'll rest up on the kickstand like so. And I'm ready, these tires are squeaking all over this and making a lot of noise. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of balance it up while I've got it centered and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these acorn nuts. Now you'll notice if it tilts to one side or the other, um, so you can move on, well, it's hard to see, but um, if, if I'm not, I just want to make sure that this is seated all the way up into the fork, and then I'll, then I'll tighten it. Tighten that side. Um, if you have the socket set, it's good to use a socket set here. This is a 15 millimeter, so... Um, you can use a 15 millimeter socket on this too to uh, get in there and just crank it down. So you just wanna make sure this is tight. You wanna check this before you go riding. Uh, just make sure everything's nice and tight on the bike. So again, last thing you want is your front wheel to come off on your way to riding. So with that like that, I am ready to hit the pedals. So the pedals will come like this. You'll see there's an L sticker and an R sticker. Um, if those stickers by chance are missing or if your pedals don't come with it, I'm gonna try to get this in the right light so you can see it. See how this one's smooth all the way around? This one's got the lines. The one with the lines is the left side. And if you look real close at the threads, you'll notice the left side is threaded, reverse threaded versus the right side. So if the stickers are missing or if you get an old bike or whatever, you can always look for these lines and that'll tell you the left pedal. So for the right pedal, it's just the same as everything. And you, these newer bikes have this on here, um, which shows you the direction the pedal goes in. So again, this is a, a place you don't want to force anything. You just kind of lightly start twisting it in and it should just grab and go in. If you, if you try to force it, you're going to strip it out. Um, when that happens, you're looking at replacing the whole crank arm here. So I'm just going to lightly tighten that one in, come over to the left side, and again, see now this one's showing it goes reverse threaded. So I'm just going to lightly set it in the hole, start twisting it, it's grabbing and going right in. So um, again, do not force these in because that will, will cause problems. Okay, I'm grab the wrench. I'm just gonna... Tighten this down, right tidy, lefty tidy on this side. All right, that's good. Okay. Now with that done, we're ready to go ahead and uh, make a few final adjustments on this. So you'll notice I haven't, uh, I haven't tightened the stem down yet, so um, I've tightened this top bolt. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back in there. Now what I wanna do is get on the bike and uh, line, it up, line up, let's see, I need this guy. So I'm just lining up the, uh, the steering wheel or the handlebars with the wheel where I want it. Now I'm gonna go with back and tighten these down. And then again, before you ride, it's always good to check and make sure all your, all your bolts, everything's tight so you're not having any rattling. Um, we like to do a, a drop test, we call it, just pick it up a couple of inches off the ground, drop it and hear, if, I mean, drop the front, drop the back, see if you hear anything rattling around. Um, you know, if your fender comes loose or something like that, you'll, you'll hear the rattling. Okay. Now, with the handlebars, I still haven't tightened the handlebars down, and this is the reason why. So when I'm riding in a comfortable position for your arms, um, your arms from your shoulder blade to the tips of your fingers straight out on top of the, brake, uh, the, the brakes should be a straight line. You know, if, if it's twisted too far up like this, that's not a comfortable riding position. You're gonna hurt your wrist, and likewise the other way too. So I'm gonna find out where it's a nice straight line Right there feels pretty comfortable. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm centered over here using this. And then I'm ready to tighten this, these handlebars down. So that's just a little tip you can use to um, you know, adjust the, they call it the cockpit of the bike. So, you know, just make your ride as, as comfortable as possible for you. So that's a good riding position for me. Um, you can tighten these computer, um, you can tighten these down if you want. I like mine a little bit loose just because if I'm riding and the sun's glaring off it or whatever, I can just reach up and, and twist a little bit. This one's a little loose for my taste, so I'll, I'll tighten that later. Um, but other than that, uh, you've got your bike put together and um, there's just a few other pre-checked rides you're gonna wanna do um, and uh, we'll get into those. Um, well, let's just, we'll just show you how to check your indexing real quick on your, on your bike. So out of the box, let's see how this guy does. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is come over here. Uh, if you have a bike stand, great, use it. Um, if not, then you can always um, use this method too. So just kind of lean it up on the kickstand, make sure the computer's off so you're not engaging the, um, you know, you don't want the computer to be engaged at all so you're not turning the motor on. Okay, now what we're gonna do is put it in this, the seventh, or oh, this has nine, so we ninth gear. I'm just gonna, just gonna um, go up one and watch as it uh, shifts up and down. So you can hear it clicking there, right? So it means it needs to go up. So it's trying to go uh, up to the next gear. So I'm gonna grab this barrel adjuster and just give it a, a little turn right there. And I'm gonna drop back down into the lowest gears and start over again. See how it, okay, now we're clicking again. So give it another little, and I'm gonna drop down again. And there's a million ways to skin a cat. This is just the method I prefer to use to gauge the uh, indexing. It's a, it's a simple way to do it at home. I mean, if you have major problems, obviously take it to a bike shop or have a professional uh, take a look at it for you, but uh, everything seems to be shifting nice now, and uh, you're set for your first ride. Uh, obviously, you want to charge the battery. Um, on that note, real quick, with the battery, um, battery maintenance is super important on these bikes. With the lithium batteries, um, what you want to do if you're going to be storing it through a winter or for a, a, you know, a long time, like a month or more, even a couple of weeks, what you want to do is get this battery between 50 and 70% of its full capacity. That's the, that's the perfect place for these lithium ion cells. Um, if, you, if you keep it plugged in for a long period of time, you're gonna start damaging those cells and then you're gonna have issues with it. So um, yeah, just keep it between 50 and 70%. Uh, avoid extreme hot, extreme cold. Don't store it outside in the winter time if you're up north, uh, if you're down south, same thing in the summer. Uh, keep it at room temperature as much as possible. It's okay to put it in and go for a ride. Uh, just when you're done, be sure to take it out and uh, you should be good to go. Just another thing. Um, so this is the, six, uh, the 690. This is a, another version of the 690, uh, the folder bike. So with this key, 
it locks the battery onto the bike. And so you see that pin drop in. With that out, I can lift this up. And uh, sometimes these are a little hard to get out, but that's how you remove the battery for this. So the key has no effect of whether the battery is turned on or turned off. It just strictly locks the, bike, the battery onto the bike. So put that down, lock it, lock it onto your bike, and you are ready to roll. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Let us know. We're happy to help out. Thanks.